Last time on Abundant Life Today with Pastor Walter Hallam. What must we be about? I don't know about you, I must be about reading the Word of God. I must be about a prayer. I must be about obeying the voice of God the way I understand it at that moment. I believe every person should have a submitted, a subjected heart, a wise mind, a growing, developing, a favorable lifestyle, and a must-be attitude. How many of you are glad Jesus talked about the be attitude? How about the must-be attitudes, huh? We must be people that are doing the will of the Lord in our life. Your life is like a shopping cart. Your life. And there are a whole lot of things in life that you see and you hear and that are around you, and they kind of get in your life. They kind of get put in the... In, but as long as you're not partaking of something, you have a right to put it back. I'm preaching so good. But the moment that you start partaking of that, even if it's just a sip, now you got to talk to God about this thing because you can be sure your adversary, the devil, is going to be talking to you about it from now on. to talk to you just for a minute about one of the most sensitive subjects that anyone can ever experience and that's the loss of a loved one or a very strong tragedy when someone goes through that how they hurt how they're very pained on the inside and how do they recover can they ever recover from the loss of a loved one I've written a book entitled the big Why," and in this book 
the Lord began to talk to me about the four reasons that something bad can happen to someone who is good. I'm very experienced in this particular understanding. My beautiful daughter, who was 18 years old, died prematurely years ago in an airplane accident. And when she went to heaven, the Holy Spirit visited me and began to talk to me about that powerful experience, about heaven itself. And then God began to talk to me about the four reasons that something bad like that can actually happen to such a good person. Now, you may know someone who's going through a very difficult time, or you might be personally going through a very, very tragic time. If you get a hold of this book, Listen, it may save their life. It may save your life. It might help you overcome pain that's almost too difficult to verbalize. It'll even tell you how to talk sometimes in those unique matters. So go right to the website at walterhallam.com. Get your copy for yourself or a friend, and I'm excited to hear about your recovery. No one's perfect, but we do have the Word of God and the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, living in us that will lead us, guide us, direct us, help us. And then we also have examples of others that are over us, around us, and, and that maybe serve under us. We have examples that can also be powerful uh, choice initiators in our life. Our nation has to make good choices. Families have to make good choices. Churches have to make choices. Individuals make choices. You make choices in your personal life, the way you manage your time. It is a choice. It, uh, most of the time, our choice defines our must-be-about attitude. You just look and define and just kind of uh, take a, a moment and, and look at everything that you do in a day's time. Just in a week's time, in a month's time, look at the pattern, look at the trend, write it down, just do a little time management, write it down, doesn't take very long to know who you are. Don't look at my book. It, it, it's amazing how we begin to see those kind of things. Then if we understand that we have an ultimate goal, which is to serve God, to serve the Lord then we can make choices that help us be about the Father's business because that path that He has for us is a good path. It's the one we want to grow into. Can I just say to you right now, you never stop growing. I'm not talking about weight or anything of that nature. I'm talking about life. You never stop growing, and it's all based upon our choices. Uh, we grow in our person as a... Christian, we grow in our person as parents, we grow in our person as uh, employers, employees. Uh, there's a constant growing process. And if you will uh, take time and analyze your life just a little bit and realize that you can make some choices that lead, uh, I believe, to the favor of God, to the wisdom of God, to favor with men. Uh, to having stature, the Bible calls, having an impact, having a, a focus in life. Choices. Everyone shout choices. choices. Very important to hear that and get it inside of your spirit. I have up here on the stage something I think is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I have a, uh, th this is a Coke and a Pepsi up here. Now, some of you weren't around in 1972. I saw this illustration on, on, online and I kind of liked it. And I thought, man, who in the world could ever miss this one? In 1972, uh, Coca-Cola, uh, right here, Coke, in 72, had 18% of the software and the soda drinks uh, in the world, basically. But they had an 18% share. It was a real big thing, and uh, that's a huge market, to say the least. And Pepsi only had a 4% share. So in 72, I remember this when it happened, they came out with a, a, a commercial, uh, some genius came out with a marketing plan. And so they would, they would cover these up, and they would have them in stores and other places, and they would say, take a drink of this, and take a drink of this. 
And they would say, tell me which one tastes the best. And people would drink the Pepsi, and then they would take a sip of the Coke. And they called it the sip test. They said, just sip this. They go, mm, I like that. And then they'd sip this. They'd say, I don't like that as much. And statistically, 57% of the people that did that thought the Pepsi was sweeter and liked it better than they did the Coke. Yet Coke was by far the 800-pound gorilla when it came to soft drinks. They were the big one. And so uh, by 19, that was in 72. So they started this blitz, this campaign. It was on television every night over and over. They spent just millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. Pepsi did, and they increased their market share enormously. They grew it by 1980. They had grown it to 11%, from 4% to 11%. And Coca-Cola had shrunk some. Well, the, you know, the, the geniuses at Coke, they had a, you know, they panicked. They said, we have to do something because they started testing it. And when people would sip it, just take a little drink, they'd say, oh, my goodness, that, that statistic is right. Pepsi tastes better than Coke. So they came up with a new idea. They said, let's have a new formula. Let's make the new Coke. Does anybody remember New Coke? So they came up with New Coke. And they do this big uh, campaign, hundreds of millions of dollars of, of New Coke. And when they did, people revolted. They were nearly rioting in the streets in some places. It was, oh, it was terrible. It was a nightmare. Everywhere, people were talking at the water coolers about, I'll never drink that, oh, that New Coke. It tastes terrible. Because they sweetened it up a lot. And so they came out with the New Coke. And the market share began to fall more and more. And so they said, something's wrong here. And they, they produced this campaign like, you've got to give us back uh, the classic Coke. We've got to have the real Coke. We've got to have the, the classic Coke. Give us Coca-Cola. Give it back. Hurry up. So finally, at a, at a real unique time, they came back with classic Coke, with the real Coke. And the market share began to grow and grow and grow and grow and never stop. And today, they are bigger than they have ever been before. Isn't that, isn't that really spiritual? Isn't that deep, huh? Let me tell you the reason for that. The reason for it is really simple. If you take and you sip the Pepsi or you sip the Coke, the Pepsi is sweeter. But what they found out is by the time you drink a, a bottle of it, that it, it's almost too sweet. In, in, on percentages, and people preferred a bottle of Coke because it wasn't as sweet. This almost, they, they, their way of saying it, is it almost became sour. Because, you know, once you drink something and it just, it's just too sweet and you take a little body of chocolate and that's great, but by the time you eat the whole chocolate plate, you're awesome. No, you shouldn't be eating that whole uh, chocolate thing. It just doesn't taste quite as good as that first bite. And so Coke started saying, well, when we do our Coke, by the time you finish a bottle of it, you'll like it better than the other one. And they found out, according to whatever study they did, that that's the way it was. So they began to market it, and it grew, and that's it. Isn't that real spiritual? That's exactly the way sin is. You can't just take a sip of sin. It comes by the bottle. It, it comes by the, by the case. It comes by the life. It comes by the soul. Uh, and, and the Bible says that sin has pleasure for a season, for a season, but afterwards, the Bible says it produces death. Listen, uh, we have to be wise to make the right choices. I said we have to be wise to make the right choices because you, 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 you realize you cannot just take a sip of sin and it not have an effect. Abundant Life School of Ministry is the place to prepare for your purpose. As a student, you'll be equipped, inspired, anointed, and released into your unique calling. Upon graduation, you will work alongside a local church vision, continue your education to be used of God in a secular occupation, or even head to the nations as a missionary. Awesome alumni are currently ministering in nations around the globe and in the United States. 
Whatever God's calling is in your life, you will become a man or woman that will make an impact on neighborhoods, cities, and nations with the gospel. If you are ready for practical, hard-hitting instruction that is highly anointed by God, then Awesome is the place for you. Come to Abundant Life School of Ministry and discover your destiny in God. Visit www.alcc.org for more information. I'd like to talk to you just for a minute about one of the most sensitive subjects that anyone can ever experience, and that's the loss of a loved one or a very strong tragedy when someone goes through that, how they hurt, how they're very pained on the inside, and how do they recover? Can they ever recover from the loss of a loved one? I've written a book entitled, The Big Why. And in this book, the Lord began to talk to me about the four reasons that something bad can happen to someone who is good. I'm very experienced in this particular understanding. My beautiful daughter, who was 18 years old, died prematurely years ago in an airplane accident. And when she went to heaven, the Holy Spirit visited me and began to talk to me about that powerful experience, about heaven itself. And then God began to talk to me about the four reasons that something bad like that can actually happen to such a good person. Now, you may know someone who's going through a very difficult time, or you might be personally going through a very, very tragic time. If you get a hold of this book, listen, it may save their life. It may save your life. It might help you overcome pain that's almost too difficult to verbalize. It'll even tell you how to talk sometimes in those unique matters. So go right to the website at walterhallam.com Get your copy for yourself or a friend, and I'm excited to hear about your recovery. Now, I'm not here putting anybody down. I just want to talk for just a moment because I want this to get in your spirit real strong. Have you ever been in a you ever been in a store shopping and and you and you start going down the aisle? Me when I go shopping and they laugh at me all the time about this. If I go shopping uh, by myself, it's dangerous. I'm talking about to like Kroger's or, or someplace. I don't I go to Kroger's because it's not too far from where we live. So uh, Cindy will say, "Hey Walter, uh, if you're coming by there, pull in there and get some milk, and then we might need some bread, and then we might need you know a little cat food." And uh, then we might need something else. And, and so I, I said, oh, yeah, sure, sure, I'll go in there. But there's something about me that when I go in the mall, I mean in the store, and I see all of the little bells and whistles and the little stuff, and I see all of the little trinkets, and, and I see all of the pots and pans, and, and I'm going down this aisle, and I'm seeing all kind of food. And, and you know you're always hungry when you go in a store. Before it's over with, I come home with two sacks of groceries. Or, or not necessarily groceries. That's the problem. One time, Cindy and I went up to the Houston Livestock Show. So we were going to go see all of the exhibits, and we said, we're just going to go to the Livestock Show. We're going to look at stuff, and we're not going to be buying a lot of stuff. And they had all of these booths and everything, and it's way cool. People have all of their little products, and, and they're all handmade, and it's all of that stuff. I came out of there with a steam press iron. I went to the rodeo, for crying out loud, and came home with a steam press iron. No, I'm like... Cindy, that's your fault. Help me out. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But my clothes are pressed. I can just tell you that. <laughs> and it's that way when I go to the store. But you know, when you come up to the counter and you've got that basket full of stuff there, did you know everything that's in that basket? Uh, you have an option. You have a choice right there. You can either go put it back or you can pay for it. One time, this happened more than once to me, I've been in a, in a line and somebody would be in front of me and they start checking out. And when they start checking out, they don't have enough money to pay for everything they started checking out. 
And depending upon the situation, uh, I either can be so busy, I, it, you know, it may just be a dollar fifty more or $2 or $5 or something. I may be so busy that I just, you know, I, I'm like, no, don't go put it back. Don't wait. I've got to go. So I'm, I'm like, I'm a Christian. Can I just help you? <laughs> Here, here's the $5 because I'm a Christian. No. And uh, somebody may be ahead of you and you think, I, I, look, I'll just help them out. They probably don't. You know, they probably don't need it, but I'll help them anyway. And you just help them, and, and you just step up and basically pay the bill for them. Especially if it's someone who looks like they really are in need. And you just help them. Because when you come up to that checkout line, and you got that basket full, now listen to this, you can either take it back at that point, or you can buy it. But if in the process of going down the aisle, which I've been known to do this many times, I might grab a bag of cashews or a bag of peanuts. So Cindy and I are going down there, and I'm eating a candy bar. And I might even drink something while we're shopping. When you get up to the counter, you better bring that package with you. You take that half thing, and you can't leave it over there by the magazine rack. Uh Uh-uh. No, you got to pay for it. Listen, because once you partake of it, once you open it up, you're like, ain't nobody looking. And you put it back. No, no, no. You take a sip, you got to pay. Otherwise, they're recording it. It's being recorded. So you got to pay. If If you tear open the bag and start eating those Fritos, on the way, I know you're hungry, and they, they make it where you're going to be hungry there. You could be so full, you're like, don't ever go to the grocery store when you're hungry. You're going to get hungry when you walk in there. I mean, you could have just eaten a Thanksgiving turkey, and you walk inside of the grocery store, and you're like, I want some ice cream. Because you went over by the ice cream place. And you smell the stuff, and here it goes again. And they're good at doing that and all of that kind of stuff. It's best just to have a list and just say, this is what I'm going to buy. Uh, but, but most of us don't do that. And so we go in there, and now we have to pay for what we partake of. Your life is like a shopping cart. Your life. And there are a whole lot of things in life that you see and you hear and that are around you, and they kind of get in your life. They kind of get put in the, in the... But as long as you're not partaking of something, you have a right to put it back. I'm preaching so good. But the moment that you start partaking of that, even if it's just a sip, now you got to talk to God about this thing because you can be sure your adversary, the devil, is going to be talking to you about it from now on. And there's coming a day. Come on, Brother Sean, help me. I'm going to have to go. I can feel it. There's coming a day. There's coming a day when you're going to come up to the checkout counter. No, no, you didn't get what I just said. There comes a day, everybody comes up to the ultimate cashier of heaven. And you'd be like, no, 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 I didn't do that. And they're like, we have it recorded. And you and I will stand before God one day and he says there is a book of the works of all of man's life and there is a book of life. If your name isn't in the book of life, you won't be rewarded for the book of works. But the Bible says there is a huge penalty for not being in the book of life. And so it's just basically like this. You come up to the counter. You got the basket full. Can I just be honest? Some of it's open and some of it's not. Some of it you want to take home with you and some of it you wish you could put back under the shelf. Like at the magazine rack right there where they do the the, the spearmint gum and everything. And the batteries. You're like, I wish I could just put the Coke back over there now. But you opened it up. And now there has to be some kind of reconciliation. And you come to the checkout counter. And you suddenly realize, I don't have any money. I can't pay for that. Listen, because it was called sin. I can't pay. I don't have enough to pay for that. 
But can I just remind you that there's one standing in line with you today. And his name is Jesus. And he will not get out of line for anyone. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. And when you did not have enough to pay for what you had participated in by a bad choice, Jesus at Calvary stepped up, listen to me, with his blood nearly 2,000 years ago, and he said, here, I have this available for you. He's not going to pay it for you. He's going to hand it to you. He says, it's available. If you'll by faith receive it, the debt will be paid and you can go and live the life growing in wisdom, in stature, in knowledge, in favor with God and with man. Come on, let's praise the Lord today. You've got to make the choice. You have to make the choice. Thanks again for joining us on Abundant Life Today with Pastor Walter Hallam. Abundant Life School of Ministry is the place to prepare for your purpose. As a student, you'll be equipped, inspired, anointed, and released into your unique calling. Upon graduation, you will work alongside a local church vision, continue your education to be used of God in a secular occupation, or even head to the nations as a missionary. Awesome alumni are currently ministering in nations around the globe and in the United States. Whatever God's calling is in your life, you will become a man or woman that will make an impact on neighborhoods, cities, and nations with the gospel. If you are ready for practical, hard-hitting instruction that is highly anointed by God, then Awesome is the place for you. Come to Abundant Life School of Ministry and discover your destiny in God. Visit www.alcc.org for more information.